How's it gaming guys? I'm Phil in the Blanks and welcome to Beauty and the Beast for the Super NES, uh, which is a different game. It's unrelated to the Sega Genesis one uh, that I played earlier uh, this this Disney month. Uh, once upon a time in a faraway land. Um, I like how they recreate the opening to the Disney movie here uh, with the stained glass windows and stuff. It's pretty cool. It's not amazingly accurate, but fairly good so there was a selfish prince who refused shelter to an old woman they also combine like multiple stained glass window scenes into one which makes sense i mean in truth she was an enchantress oh no that looks pretty good as punishment she turned the prince into a hideous beast and left him with a blooming rose Blo blooming rose that's a british a blooming rose <laughs> The prince was to remain a beast unless he could find true love before the rose withered. I have the line of like, but who could learn to love a beast? <laughs> Disney Beauty and the Beast. Uh, yeah, so this is not made by the same company as um, the... Uh, yeah, she got five tries. Keep it level normal. Uh, it's um, not made by the same guys who made the Sega Genesis ones. There's two for the Genesis and one for the... Um, Super nice. Fearing, ah oh shit, v Beast Seeks Bell in the Castle Hall. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention and that goes by itself. So this also doesn't, it kind of follows the movie, just not very well. First like friggin' third of the of the, the, the game is just in these halls. Bye Bell. there she goes, oh shit. So this game suffers a lot of like, at least the early part of the game, just weird enemy placement and not fun hit detection. Oh my God. So. I had, like, just touched on this game a little bit when I started Disney Month, and I thought, like, oh, man, it's the Super NES version. It's going to be pretty good, all things considered. Jump over here, and that's, I guess, where Belle got to, because that's where Lumiere is saying to go, but you can't go here. Uh, you have a roar button, which is kind of cool. You charge it up, and that does certain things. Uh, anyways, the... Uh, this is a very poorly made game, which is a shame, because it looks very good. Um, it sounds pretty good, too, but it has... Holy crap, really crazy amount of challenge. Um, I've been playing this for about four days now. Just kind of get used to it. The controls are really weird. I'm like dying like crazy. Uh, yeah, it's just faster if I throw this constantly. Um, but yeah, it, it's got super unfair level design. Uh, and just really bad enemy placement. I hate the bosses in this game. Uh, but we'll get through it. I've been able to beat it a couple times now. So it's, it's really not hard once you get to know it. This is one of those games that... If I, if I had as a kid, I would have been able to just turn this on and just play uh, without any real problems. But because I did not grow up with this game, I had to kind of learn it quickly. Um, but yeah, this is this is so far the hardest game I've, I've played on the Disney month, uh, I guess. Hopefully, I mean, depending on how, in what order I've been putting these up. Um, your time is the rose there. It, it loses petals, which is a cool idea. That's, that's not a bad idea. Um, it tends to not matter except for a couple levels where all of a sudden time really, really matters. I'm just gonna jump over here, screw that. Um, and you have eight hits. You have one heart and every two hits will take off a quarter of the heart. It's really damn, really weird. Um, and the books do things. I think the green one is a checkpoint. I don't really know. Um, red is invincibility, I think. Just careful, I just like to inch. You run weirdly fast, but you're just gonna run into enemies if you do that, so. Oh, blue, what does blue do? Oh. Well, that was a cheap-ass death. I don't know what blue does, because that just didn't fill me up. So it's not health. So I start here. Screw it, let's just keep going. Um, we have five continues. Uh, I know it said five tries, but I only have one uh, life after this, so... Uh, it's definitely not five lives that it gives you, it's five continues. And that's more than enough for me. Um, to be honest, we should be getting through this without too much trouble. Uh, like I said, it's hard if you don't know what you're doing, but it gets a little bit easier. Um, the more you play it, which is, I guess, not a bad thing. It just, it just, it feels really cheap. If you're playing this for the first time, it's very cheap feeling. Um, you roar here to get that moving. The roar mechanic is really sorely underused in this game. It's made to, like, start platforms or do certain things like that, but you don't use it very often, so it's kind of a shame. Get off me. Um, also, I, I, this is actually one of those games I think it's better the more you go through. The first castle levels are really bad. Like, the enemies' placements are garbage. Um, it's just not fun. The game gets fun if there's life up there, but we're at the end of the level anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Oh, I can't believe I made that. Careful, the smoke can't hurt you, and at a level. There we go. 
And we got <laughs> good old Ms. Potts. Also, I think it's weird, I was like, your last total was, I don't care what my last total, just tell me what my score is, man. Whatever. Um, but yeah, the first, I think it's like five levels or something, is the castle. Which is a little crazy, considering nothing really happened in the story yet. It's just, I don't want her to see the rose, so I'm chasing her. Oh, crap. Floor. It's made it to the top. Uh, getting hit by the floor will just straight up kill you, so just run, run. If there's an opening to the right, there's going to be a bat flying through it. Like right here. Ah, oh, damn it. I was not. Oh, that was really close. I could have easily fallen down. I'm pretty sure you don't have invincibility time against the spikes either. Which is. Uh, it is what it is. Whatever. Careful. But yeah, this is a an absolutely ruthless game uh, if you're not ready for a lot of the things happening. But. It's at least good looking. Also, I like the music here. Like, this is the mob music um, from, from Beauty and the Beast. I think that's really cool. They also use Gaston's theme for a lot of weird places. And at least, the again, the areas look nice. Shit. It's invincibility. Yeah, it's right. It's invincibility, not, not life. My mistake. Being silly. Let's go. It doesn't last very long either. It's about to... Yeah, there it goes. But yeah, the music's okay. And again, the presentation is really nice. Ah, shit. Ooh, that lucked out for me. <laughs> Oof. Okay. Um, in my opinion, the worst part of the game is actually probably over now. Uh, it's also the bosses. The bosses are really cheap. But the first level I find is really difficult. There's just so many enemies. Here it's not too bad. You get used to it a lot more. Uh, plus some of the other levels are kind of interesting and fun shit. Uh, another weird mechanic with the uh, roar freeze enemies, um, but some you can actually use as, as a platform, which is not a bad idea, I guess. A lot of like leaps of faith and that kind of thing. Jump. Good. Ooh, I didn't think I was gonna make that. But yeah, if I need to get continue. Oh shit. Ooh. Um, if I need to take a game over or something, or if I lose enough continues. I don't think I will. I've been able to beat this within two continues. Or sorry, one continue. Uh, fairly easily now. Um, and I've done it without a continue a couple times. So I've played through this, I'd say about... Jeez, five or six times now. Just to practice it. Probably have to do the same thing for Lion King. Lion King is what I grew up with, but that game is brutal. Up we go. But yeah, uh, I think the game gets a lot funner once you get out of the castle. <laughs> Actually, the next two levels aren't too bad. There we go. Take you out. Ha-ha. It's all, the problem is it's got very much like early Sonic game stuff where like you go a little bit, like a little bit, then a little bit. You, you move fast and it's hard to react to things that come up, come out at you. And plus your, your range of attack is not great. Shit, that's bad. Hopefully I'll make this. But the top anyways, ah shit. I got plenty of time. Um, the music changes when you start running out of time, so you, you'll, you'll really know it. The game does a decent job of giving you rose petals. Ooh, I can't believe I made that, nice. Yeah, these next couple levels I like. They're 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 just like um, trap levels. I like traps a lot more than enemies in this game, so. Good music, really good music. You use a foreground. Yeah, it's very, it's a great presentation for a game. I really like it. But it makes you wonder like, I really wish um, Capcom had gotten the rights to play, or play, to make this game. Um, Capcom did amazingly with uh, Disney stuff. So they got, like, Aladdin, uh, which was great, because most of the time, shit, most of the time they got um, TV shows. They got the Disney Afternoon stuff, which is fine. But I would have loved to see the, the big games like this under Capcom, which would be really, really cool. Also, um, it's hard to tell, but the physics are really kind of weird. If you go near a at the end, edge of a platform, you'll, you'll do that, and you either have to push forward and you'll like bounce back, or you'll just fall. It's very, very weird, but you get used to it, like I said. Thank God you can look up and down. Some games just can't do that. Oh, that's cheese like that. That's what I'm talking about. Um, so, oh, damn it. I did not pay attention there. Um... Beauty and the Beast trivia. It's a little bit of a longer one. Um, so, the guy who's like most well known for the music and stuff is is usually Alan Menken, but it's also another guy. Um, his name is Howard. Uh, sorry, Howard Ashman, and he's a most like people who are like super into Disney. 
it's it's thanks to this guy. They'll agree that's thanks to this guy. I missed that. Damn it. Um, that that it, it's thanks to him that the Disney restaurants basically happened and became like a musical kind of thing. Um, he died in 1991, I believe, right before Beauty and the Beast came out. Um, so he he was the guy uh, who really worked on Little Mermaid. Um, he was like the one who's super famous for that. And the movie that was supposed to come out after ugh, damn it, after uh, shit, oh my god, Phil, um, after Little Mermaid was supposed to be Aladdin. Uh, but Aladdin had a little bit of like development hell kind of history behind it. And after Little Mermaid did so well, they got Alan Menken and. Uh, Howard Ashmore to, uh, sorry, Howard Ashman, I'm sorry. Um, ah, my God. Uh, like, they, they, they basically pushed Beauty and the Beast, so, oh my God, how do I get past this? Let me jump, jump over. Okay, good. That was close. Um, and, and gave him, like, free reign, because at first they were really hesitant on giving him, um, so much power over Little Mermaid. Like, they didn't even want to give, uh, Party of World. Uh, a go. They were just like, no, the too many, too much, too much music. But after, oh my god, they really fought that. Um, it really proved that this guy knew what he was doing. So they were just like, all right, you can basically have Beauty and the Beast. Anything you want in that, you can have. You can put it in. Go for it. And it did super well. Uh, he died right before this came out. So if you ever watch it uh, at the end of the credits, they they actually dedicate the movie to him. Uh, he originally wrote like like twelve or thirteen songs for Aladdin, but he had already passed away before Aladdin was truly in major production to come out. Um, so only like a couple of his songs actually made it in there, um, which is a shame because I would have loved to have heard the other ones. Uh, though um, I think he did do the uh, Proud of My Boy song, which Aladdin's mom was supposed to do, which I actually don't really like all that much, but whatever. One stinker out of like 12, it's still pretty good. Uh, damn it. But yeah, thankful for Howard Ashman. Um, it's, it's because of him that I think Disney came out of this um, golden. There we go. I like how there's a few invincibility ones. I don't really find a lot of them around the game, but when you get them, you just run. You just run, fa run fast. It's very Sonic the Hedgehog, like I said. You're invincible, you go. You ignore everything, because everything's traps. Okay. Uh, come back. There we go. <laughs> Shit, that was so stupid to me. Oh my god. So like I said, this is not related to the Sega Genesis releases. The Sega Genesis had two Beauty and the Beast games. Shit, shit, shit. Oh, how'd that hurt me? The side of the spike. Um, it had a, a one presumably marketed for girls called Bell's Quest, and then one presumably marketed towards boys. I think it was called The Roar of the Beast. I do not have The Roar of the Beast, uh, which is why I'm playing this one. If I had... Damn it, Phil. If I had um, the two Genesis ones, I probably just would have played the two of them. Um... I'll probably try to end up getting it, unless it's like a crazy expensive game, uh, so that if we do a sequel to Disney Month, um, I'll have that one. But I was hoping this one would be better. I've, again, it's not like it's bad, it's just... it's. I think it's it's got a lot of potential that is completely ruined by just really harsh um, enemy placement and, and level design. Like, they really didn't want you to be good at this game. But I've played worse. Believe me, I played worse. Just for the freaking Disney month, I played worse. At least this one can be enjoyable if you get good at it. <laughs> I love the freaking awkward swinging of the uh, of the stained glass swordsman. Also, I don't know the point of the mirror. It just like tells you, oh, it's over here. I know where the end of the level is, magic mirror. And you don't see it in very many levels either. I don't know if it does a thing like it unlocks something for you. I have no idea, but it's there and it's in the way, so I just grab it. Please make this. Oh, okay, we're good, we're good. Yeah, this level I actually don't mind. I like, ah, uh, damn it. Well, it'd be nice if I wasn't garbage. But I like trap levels, they just make more sense to me. Crap, I cannot miss this. Okay, good. And up here we have a life, I believe. Yeah, right there, and then the exit right down there. Oh, thank God, I thought that was gonna hit me. Cool, we're doing all right for lives, despite the fact that I've already died. That's not bad. Oh my god, that was really close. All right, um, is that it? I always forget how many levels there are in the castle. Oh, here we go, this is the boss. I hate this guy. It's in the left, he comes down a lot, and um, the problem is if you hit him, ah, damn it, well, hopefully I should hit him. When he comes down, hit him, schmuck, ah, okay. He, he, he can't hurt you for a split second when he's like, white like that, but he can hurt you 
right afterwards. So if you're standing right there in the middle, um, you'll hit him and he'll hurt you. And it's just, he takes more hits than you do. Uh, so you're just going to die. And that's really the problem with the bosses that, one, they take more hits than you do. And you almost just don't have a way to not get hit half the time. There are, thankfully, only like four bosses in this game. Uh, weirdly enough, the last boss is, ah, damn it, is definitely the easiest one. Which is the fight with Gaston. Not to spoil it or anything, but it's pretty obvious. Like, there's nothing you can really do there. If you jump right afterwards, you, you're still going to get hit. So you just kind of need to stay on the sides there. Just don't go in the middle. It's just really weird. Ah, my god. And I'm also just really bad at this. You don't have a lot of options for attacking either. You got this weird, like, stomp as well, but I've never really found a good use for it. I was dead. Two more hits, something like that. They have like 10 or 12 hits, I forgot. Nice, there we go. Okay, cool. And then jump across. Whew. Jeez. Because you can easily fall on the spikes. The jumping is really difficult in this game. All right. Next world, which is... Now we're finally following the story a little bit better. I don't know why it's so long in the castle, but... Hey, Belle, get away from my rose. And she's like, oh, God. There, there we go. <laughs> Very happy music for such a scary picture. In the dark of night, prowl packs of wolves as his beast follows Belle into the woods. So, this is where, obviously, she escapes and he comes for her and then she's attacked by wolves. This is actually a good idea for a level, plus it's very good looking. Ah, oh, I like this. Go down here. This is, I think, a life. Careful, these things will flip over and you will die immediately if you touch the water. Ah, frog! Jeez. Also, weird music choice. Like how they used the mob music earlier in the game. This is Gaston's theme. And I don't really get that. So, whatever. Try to stay at the top if you can. Oh my god, that was close. Um, you don't always have a choice. But down there, like the water is so dangerous. Uh, it's hard to tell where platforms are going to be down there. So I try to stay up at the top as much as possible. Just jump from tree to tree. Uh, I see you, bat. Ah, uh, damn it. Ooh, ah. I was sort of hoping the trunk would just kind of lead me to land, but I guess not. Yeah, I hate that. But I can still go down here and get another life, uh, which is nice. Good. Frog. Yeah. So as long as... as oh, my God. If you, if you keep dying, uh, you can just go get that life again. But it is dangerous, obviously, to get the life. Er, it's not too bad. Frog. The frogs are terrifying. They're always near edges. It's so annoying. Okay. Oh my god. I hate I hate the at ledge mechanics. Okay. Ooh. Ooh, okay, that's fine. Hit me. I don't care. I just don't want to fall. Stay at the top. <laughs> Careful precision. Okay. Good, good, good. Down I go. Oh. Thankfully the levels aren't very long, which is really nice. Um, because that would be really frustrating. Though. It's not always easy to find a checkpoint, because um, they're collectible checkpoints, which is sometimes really frustrating. Jump! Oh, is there anything up here? Is there where I'm supposed to go? I don't remember. Eh. There were wolves, damn you. Makes sense that there would be wolves. There we go, yeah, okay, cool. Um, it's funny, like, the first world has five levels, and every world has less and less and less levels. It's very odd. Um, it's just front packed with, with hard levels. Wolves aren't too hard. Hit them once. Hit them again. Sometimes they jump towards you. Uh, it's it's really not difficult. Just keep it going. Good placement for that um, invincibility. See a nice head start on the level. I don't know how bats take two hits, man. I'm the beast. I think another thing that kind of annoys me with this game is the enemies are really boring. Ooh, they're bats. Ooh, they're rats. Ooh, frogs. The wolves make sense. I mean, to be honest, though, like, what else could they have? It was weird in the castle, though, because you had enemies that were clearly your servants. So I don't know why they were attacking me. So I guess that's probably why they did it. I mean, it's hard to kind of just think of enemies that make sense without being cliched in, in things like this. What's on the other side? Is there anything over here? Really nothing. Oh, some of a lifer or something. Oh. Yeah, the wolves make sense. Um, townspeople would make sense, but I mean, then you'd be killing humans. And they probably wouldn't want that, so. I get why that's not a, not the case. Wolf. Oh, wow, he just fell through the world. That'll teach him. Oh, now we're at the, bo uh, the mob music again. Which is fine. That makes sense, too. 
It's not like you can use the happy music from Beauty and the Beast. Oh, nothing here. Damn. Uh, good. Drop a frog. No! No! They're always so close to the edge. Speaking of the edge, um, careful here. There is a wolf right there. After, after it moves. Alright, we're doing pretty good. Usually I've died a couple more times than this, so I'm actually doing fairly good. There's weirdly enough a, a level in the library. I actually kind of like it, but it doesn't make sense why there's a level in the library, but whatever. Damn. There's only so much you can do when the... This, this wasn't like a, really an action-adventure movie, like the way Aladdin is, for example, or Lion King. So, I don't like that frog there. I'm just gonna screw that, man. Ooh, but there's one up. Oh, that's dangerous. No. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Frog. <laughs> I hate it. Can I freeze him? That work? Maybe. Whatever. Nice. I always like snow levels. The one in Bell's Quest was really cool too. I really liked it. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. Frog. <laughs> that was bad. Uh, but yeah, I've always liked uh, ice. Not ice levels, snow levels. They look very cool. And here we go, here's the boss. Which is laying up the mob music again. It's uh, just like a ghost wolf and then an infinite amount of regular wolves. Uh, you can only attack the ghost wolf when it's jumping. I like to stay it to the right, because uh, it doesn't really spawn right at the right there, but you have to be careful of the regular wo wolves that will spawn. It's, I hate this boss. It's just frustrating, but just keep attacking. Whenever it, like, you can tell it's gonna jump, just go in for an attack. Like ah, frig, way too early. Or late, I mean. I just find the bosses are just... Like I, like I said during the Gargoyle boss, they're just really... Um, a little bit luck-dependent. At least for this guy. But it's, it's just... Bad hit detection and stuff, but... It's funny, that, again, the last boss is much, much easier. And and entertaining. It's, like, it's a cool idea for a last boss. I like it. Here, it's like... It would have made sense if it was just a lot of wolves, but it was just one big wolf with some smaller wolves, but that's fine. Hello? There we go. <laughs> Loading times is a super nice game. Hi, Bell. Oh. <laughs> way, to, way to look weak in front of Bell. No, I'm just joking. Obviously, she takes care of him, just like in the movie, which is cute. Um, but you don't get, like, the cool... Um, closer and closer, two hearts drift. Uh, to win Belle's love, the beast seeks a gift. I don't know why it's rhyming now. Uh, but yeah, it doesn't have the cool, like, be or get. Well, actually, that makes sense, because Beast wasn't part of that part of the movie, so never mind. I'm talking my ass for nothing. Here, okay, so we do get this kind of level, uh, which is part of the movie, and it's the cute love song. This is not a bonus level. This is an actual level that you can die in, which is really ridiculous. Move to the for move to the forward. Move forward, and, uh, Belle will toss... Um, snowballs. You have to catch them and you don't actually press a button to catch it. You can only miss three times and then you die. It's ridiculous. Because it's like, first of all, it's boring. But second of all, it's it's sort of easy to miss one of these and to punish someone for death. That being said, though, if you do get all of them, uh, you get a, a prize. I think it's a one-up. Yay, you get a one-up. So if you get all of them in like a volley or whatever, but it's, it's just, this is a super weird part of the game. At, I get, I guess I get why they put it in there. It's cute that you have the lovey-dovey moments of Disney. Like, in the Aladdin game, you get the carpet ride in, um, or like, or like a whole new world. Um, and then, you know, in, in Belle's Quest, you got uh, the Be Our Guest. So it's, it's kind of cool that they have the musical moments. I just, I find this really weird. This should have been a bonus game to like get new lives and that kind of thing. Like maybe like this, maybe a little bit faster paced, but not have it be a friggin' nice one up. Uh, a mandatory thing where if you fail it, you die. I guess you could um, farm lives though. I don't know if if you die, um, cause you just start over completely. I don't know if the lives come back, but if, you, if they do, you could get maximum amount of lives, which I believe would probably be nine. And I missed one. She giggles. I do like how she laughs at you. That's kind of cute. I don't know. I get what they were going for. It's just not the most well done part. Shit. Don't laugh at me, Belle. 
Oh, I didn't know I was going to make that. You definitely want to be, like, right in front of Beast. If it's, like, right in his face, he will not catch it. It's very frustrating. One more. One more. One. Oh my god, how many there are there? That's, like, got to be, like, 25 or something shots that you can only miss three of. A little ridiculous. Okay, thank you for my score, Chip. Do you know I got a story here? Here's just the library. Um, books are the enemies. Again, for some reason. Whatever, at least they're animated cool. Um, but yeah, I like this level a lot. It's all a climb to the top, and this is the really the only level where I find time really matters, because there's some really difficult platforming sections um, that you have to repeat if you make a mistake. So, I might time out. I've done it before, so... Ah, shit. That was so stupid of me. But I've said it before, I've always liked um, uh, vertical levels, so I like the idea of this. Plus, it, it makes the library seem very grand, and it, I love the design of the library. Yeah, you just gotta kind of run by them. Um, the design of the library in the movie is just fantastic. That was stupid of me. So I like how there's a level in the library, even if it doesn't make much sense. Invincibility, go! Go, 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 go! Run past the books. Shit. Yeah. So here's the part, ah oh, damn it, here's the part I was talking about. Green books will come out, you just gotta be really good with your jumping. This is not a jumping game, man. Uh, hit. Oh, that was really dumb of me. I thought I'd be like, oh, I have time to roar. Oh well, wait it out, this takes a while. It's very much the blocks from Mega Man, just not nearly as fun. Not that they were fun in Mega Man. At least you can see where they're going to come out of, though. They're, it's all the big green books. Ah, shit. That's what I mean. You just... You can make a mistake really easily and just start it over. And that's where all the time will basically come from. Ooh, that was close. Ah, shit. Momentum-based physics jumps. No fun. Come on. I also don't like how you have to wait a whole... Like, a whole wave or whatever. It should be like, when it reaches the halfway point, the beginning starts again. There we go. Much better. Much better. Ridiculous. Ugh. Okay. Whew. It's not the last time we do that, but my time is starting to go. But at least, I think I just got a checkpoint. I think that was a checkpoint. We need to find some rose petals, please. Ooh. I want a life, though. Eh. Nice. Oh, that was close. Oh my god, and hear more of this shit. Come on, there we go. Mm, that was bad, that was bad. Oof. I think you could die of, um... Of, uh, like... Fall damage? I guess I got lucky there. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's close. Thank you. Oh, that didn't give me a life. Wait, is that life or... F uh, 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 life or health? Okay, so time is just about done. Music's gonna change in a second once that la that pedal falls. There we go. So now we have one left. This is the last pedal. Once it reaches the ground, it is uh, time over. Nice. There we go. Is it just me? Do the pedals look like they have eyes? I don't know. It's just me. Oh, another one. Nice. Didn't even notice that one. So we're, we're probably gonna be okay now at this point. Careful. Oh, shit. Oh, oh, that was close. Oh. Wow, that one just stays there. Okay. Can I have a uh, book, please? Shit. We're out of time. Okay, good, good. All right, cool. There we go. At least if I fall, I fall here now. Yeah, this level is definitely the worst for, for time. But they, they've been decent at giving me f pedals, though. I think I'm at the end now, so I should be okay. Just run, just run, just run. Thank you. Whew. Awesome. Great music there. <laughs> and again, the Gaston music. It's so weird. Ah, shit. That was so bad. Frick. Ah, frig. It's 
Sorry, not much to say. I mean, it's very much just climb. This level is a little easier, though, because there's not as much platforming. It's really just climb a lot. And just a lot of ways to go, which is good. Give me some choice. Give me some freedom, please. Yay. I think they might have made a mistake. Like, this was supposed to be the first library level or something. I have no idea. I don't even know what the story is supposed to be right now. I saved Belle from the wolves, and then we threw snowballs, and now here's the library that I have to climb the top of. Belle's like, give me that book. Oh, which one? The one at the very top. Ugh, like, oh, fine. Nice. Yeah, I hate the combat in this game. <laughs> it's, a, it's not precise. And um, I think this is the last level before my least favorite boss. Who want that? Thank you. That was not a life. Yeah, that was that was health. Whoops. Also, lame though. Why would you put the health away and you have to go through enemies? Health should be just a fun little pickup to help you out, not something that you have to danger yourself for. And why would put it at the end of the level? That's no fun either. Oh, whatever. Uh, this boss is awful. Uh, you just gotta be really precise. So I might die. I'm not sure. Hopefully not. Uh. Whew. So it's the gargoyle again, except he shoots fire, and it's really, really, really precise sometimes. So I just kind of try to rush it, um, because if you rush it, you're going to get past him um, before he becomes, like, able to hit you again. So, like, smack and then run. Oh, God. Oh, God. That's good, at least. If I get a hit and at least get... Oh, shit. If I can get a hit on him, then it's a little bit better. Damn. Not getting that. Oh, damn. Yeah, he's very, he's very, um, precise with his fireballs. Nice. Didn't think I get that. Again, why are the gargoyles attacking me? This is my castle, man. Leave me alone. Shit. Two left. Two hits left. Nice. Ah, damn. Boo. If the platform wasn't there, I would hit that fire and I'd be dead right now. Ah, jeez. Oh, thank God. Okay, cool. All right, wait for the fire to disappear before I try to go, because I don't want to kill myself. There we go! All right. Uh, I think we're in the last level now, which is just, like, the mob, basically. Oh, this is the dancing. I guess here's the dancing part. You don't get a little mini game like in the Genesis version, but you still get it. Aww. It's cute. Well animated. There we go. Again, really happy music. <laughs> Fired by hate, anger unleashed, spited by Bell, Gaston stalks the beast. Was it always rhyming? Was I just not doing it right? That's so weird. All right. I really like the look of this level. It's very cool looking. It's again, very vertical, which again, I like, which is very fun. Uh, it's not super hard. It's, again, a lot of traps and not really enemies, so I, I tend to like these types of levels. Uh, careful of dust or something. But, yeah, I like this level. It's funny because these levels, I find, are way easier than the beginning. Like, the forest and the castle are way harder than the library and outside the castle. Also, just, it shows how short this game is. Jeez, only three, or sorry, four worlds. Five, I guess, if you count Winter with Bell. Careful. Uh, what's up here? Oh, nothing. Oh, just a bat. Thank you. Thank you for that. You will get cheap hits here. They'll be like, just like friggin' things falling from above you that you could never tell are there before it actually happened. I guess you'd look up, but I'm not doing that every friggin' platform. Oh, yeah, and the wind. I forgot about the wind. Which really isn't that bad, to be truly honest. I think we're almost there, anyways. Oh, that was close. Oof, also close. Yeah, your jumping ability is actually pretty good in terms of height. Is there how big Beast is? It's not bad. Ouch. Ooh, just made that. Ah, oh, damn it. Careful. This weird dust shoot is very interesting. Invincibility. <laughs> ha ha! Oh, there we go. Nothing. Nope, nope. 
There we go. So I into the right. Nah, I don't even care. So there we go. Uh, we're at the last level, uh, or the it's like a level and a um, fight. I actually really like it. It's really cool. So it starts off with loading. Jeez, climb at the top, and um, when you get through the windows, careful, LeFou will shoot you with a shotgun, which is pretty cool. It's fun that LeFou's in the game. Jump. Uh, careful. Um, and then you fight Gaston, which is I, I think a pretty cool fight. I like it a lot. It's the only one that like I feel you can have strategy for. Top, there we go. So you come down here, he'll come out and smack him. Jump over. Either he'll, if you're far away, he'll have a, a bow. If you're close, he'll try to punch you. So you just jump, and sometimes we'll get him with a hit. Sometimes you don't, but it doesn't matter. All you're trying to do is get him to fall down uh, until you reach the last area of ship, uh, and then you just want him to. Um, uh, well, yeah, once you reach the bottom, that's when you just start attacking him. I like this. It's, it's not a bad idea. Be careful. I like how you at least jump. Like, he's predictable, so. Jump. Oh, damn. And we're almost there, I think. Ah, shit, I'm doing so bad. Jump. Jump. Yeah, this is the one. Jump. And you just keep hitting him until he dies. There we go. That is Be the Beast. And you have to jump down here, but it's like... Oh, this is pretty high. Hope I don't sprain my ankle. Ah! <laughs> Poor beast. But that was Beauty of the Beast uh, for the Super Nintendo. Um, I do like how you get to see this moment animated. Uh, like, that's pretty cool. Oh, I'm alive, Belle. Hello, how are you doing? Like, that's, that's pretty neat. I do like that. I don't know how she got the dress all of a sudden. But I've always thought it was cool when, when uh, games do their cutscenes in the game engine like that. Uh... Obviously, games nowadays can do so much more, but back then, that was pretty cool. Uh, like, it's not just it cuts right away and then just shows the pictures, which can be cool, too, because cinematics are fun, too. But I like it where they do it, like, with the in-game sprites. And they both lived happily ever after. And the angel's like, oh. <laughs> Yay. So that was Beauty and the Beast for the Super Nintendo. Um, if I had to be truly honest, I'd rather play Bell's Quest. <laughs> For the Genesis, I think it's a better made game. That looks great, though. And for some reason, just fades to black. And here are the credits behind them, for some reason. Okay. 1994. That's pretty late for the Super NES. I, by 1994, I expect a lot more from my Super Nintendo games at this, at this point. I really do. I mean, that's the year, like, Super Metroid came out. <laughs> uh... Presentation by Mark Frazier. Presentation was fantastic. Music was okay. Um, not amazing, but I mean, could be worse. Uh, but presentation in this game is very pretty. It looks great. Beauty Beast words by Howard Ashman. Thank you, Howard Ashman. You basically got Disney to live on, man. Oh, was the, he was the lyricist. Okay, and the music itself was by um, Menken. All right. Well, I don't know everything. So I make a lot of mistakes. <laughs> and it actually does all the songs. You're like, something there. Blah, 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 blah. It's weird how they... I mean, I guess it makes sense that they'd have to do that. That's, that's what credits are. But it's like, geez, they're all right there. It's, it's almost all music credits here. It's also weird how it says words by Howard Ashman. Because it's not like they have words in this game. So that's a little weird. I don't know. Just think out loud at this point. But yeah, no, I'm, I'm looking forward to trying out the Genesis 1, Roar of the Beast, uh, which I'll try to track down. Um, I don't know if it's expensive or not. There's a lot of these games that I'm worried that are going to be expensive. Um, but I, I'll try to do what I can so I can have more to choose from uh, next time I want to do a Disney month. Because um, I, I went through a good chunk of them for this one, for, for what I have in the collection. Thanks to Mandy, Louise, Bill, Paul, and Gaz, Tim, and Barg. And a bunch of other people. I'm not gonna read. I thought that was gonna be like two or three people. There's a lot more. But I wouldn't say this is a bad game, but I think it could have been a lot better. Bye for now. As if you're gonna make a sequel for Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I'm Phil the Blanks. I'll see you guys next level. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this episode, click that subscribe button and hit the bell icon to know when the next episode is up. If you want to support my channel, share some videos with some friends and consider supporting me on Patreon.